right. call the meeting of the Fairfield School Committee to order at 6.01. And we're also going to open into a public hearing on the proposed FY25 budget. There have been changes since it was um, discussed at our prior meeting in February. Well, not yep. uh, so I expect there will be some discussion about that. So I'll turn it over to Shelly. Um, so I have a slideshow for you that I didn't email you to, to you yet. You have the printed copy of it there. This is a truncated version of the narrative because the narrative is quite lengthy. So I wanted to try to break it down in a little bit um, shorter fashion for us. So I'll go pretty quickly. There's not a huge change. There's, it's a huge dollar amount, but it's not a lot of changes. So we should be able to move through it. And then what Darius and I were thinking, once we close the public hearing at the number that's presented, we'll come back to the budget um, on the agenda item okay. on the actual agenda for further discussion, because we do have some ideas on possible reductions moving forward. So. Okay. But we'll present what has been voted on um, at the meeting prior to this. Um, so how has the budget developed? You all have heard this before, so I'm going to yeah. go pretty quickly. There's not a lot of public here, so I don't feel like I need to get into this with great detail. But um, we do focus on building a needs-based, student-centered, fiscally responsible budget while taking a hybrid approach to development, which means that we are aware of keeping the budget as low as possible, have to account for level service increases for wages or other non-contractual um, or non-salary increases, but then also take into consideration new needs and initiatives. So, you know, we really try to be comprehensive um, and also be aware of, of what the bottom line looks like as we go through that process. So you can see the timeline there on the bottom. We start in November, December with administrative review. January, you all reviewed the first draft. February, we moved forward a number of 2.5% to come to the public hearing, and then we did receive transportation bid updates. So um, prior to this meeting, 15 minutes ago, school committee voted to move forward a different number than the February meeting, which we're presenting today at the March meeting. Uh, we have a meeting later this month. I can't remember the date mm -hmm. off the top of my head. 27th. 26th or 7th. He has it just to get it on record. I want to see if it's uh, eight. Twenty-six, seventy-six, seven yep. p.m. That will be to actually vote the budget, and if there's any changes needed between now and then, we will get those in place. Uh, and then town meeting, I believe, is April 29th. All right, so what is our level service budget since that's the first step of our process here? There's the only change to this from the last meeting is the transportation increase. So we had accounted for a non-wage increase that included $5,000 for transportation. The transportation bid came in uh, $111,000 higher than we anticipated. So that is a change of $106,000. Uh, the wage increase, there was no change there. I consolidated the info so it looks a little bit different, but you can see there on the slides it accounts for the COLA and step increases for our contract employees, adjustments for um, non-union and individual contracts, and then we did capture savings due to retirements or attrition where needed, and then that wage adjustment includes um, a, a adjustment for ESSER spending. So in the current year, we paid about $60,000 of wages on ESSER. We're not gonna have those funds next year. Um, so that money gets added back in. So our total increase at level service is 3.97%. Looking at new needs and initiatives, uh, we added an additional $35,553. Uh, the primary increase here is related to field trips and curriculum consumables, which is $24,000 of this overall increase. The other 11,000 or 12,000 or so is related to the DEN program. Um, just a reminder there that we're talking about adding a specialized early intervention program for students that are high needs existing in the building already, uh, or students that we may be able to service that are residents in the future, or possibly bringing in additional tuition um, by bringing in students from other districts surrounding us. That added an additional 0.68% to the budget. So our total uh, general fund is stated here at the top. 
uh, this was approved at the 545 meeting tonight to move forward to public hearing. So we are looking at a 4.65% increase over FY24. And then uh, we do use supplemental funds of 182,000 in grants and 531,000 in revolving funds for a total operating budget of just over $6.2 million. Um, expenses, I'm not going to go through again because you did get the, the big brief yep. on that last month and it, it's written there for you. So I'll just go quickly through some facts here and then some charts. So about 77% of FY25 expenses are related to instruction or teaching and learning. So um, whether that's salaries and wages, classroom materials as a whole uh, when looking at the whole budget. 82% um, of the whole budget is related to wages, of which almost $4 million is paid to staff who work directly with students. Other expenses total about $1 million, and the budget does include school-based costs, so that's for anyone who's here in the building, staff, supplies, materials, and central office shared expenses. And just a quick snapshot so you can see visually what that looks like. The orange is instruction expenditures, that's all expenses. Uh, operations and maintenance takes up the next largest piece of that pie. And then salaries and wages, you can see a repeat theme here where instruction goes to the majority of salaries and wages. And other expenses sort of even out, that pupil service is significantly larger piece of the pie, primarily because of the transportation costs. Historical info, just so you can see where we're at, uh, we have not presented a budget of 4.65% in the last five years, at least. I'm not sure if prior to that it had, it had ever been so high. We haven't even come as high as 3.5. So this is a significant increase for us to be discussing. Last year, if you recall, we were much higher than that and made some um, difficult but necessary decisions to reduce the budget to 3.26% by reducing staffing. Yeah. Projected enrollment for next year, just so you can see how that pans out, and it gives us a little bit of a sneak peek of what's coming ahead. We only have one grade level that remains with three sections. So coming up here in a few years, as our class sizes continue to decrease, uh, we'll be having an opportunity for additional staffing reduction if it's warranted at that time. But you can see we added in the DEN program, the second grade, which is currently the first grade students, because this is looking at next year, that is um, a reduction from three sections to two so that we could add the DEN program and then reallocate the staffing and the wages from the budget for that program. So it'll be about $299 as projected right now, give or take a few. And then uh, I think I just have a little bit of an enrollment history here for you and then a, a, a recap. So you can see um, 2025 is at the top going down to 2022. You can see our resident enrollment and school choice are down slightly over those years. So we are under projecting to be under that 300 student mark between the two. Um, we have talked about this at great length, but our school choice numbers are going to continue to go down. So we will see a decline over the next few years, uh, particularly when that uh, class that has three sections ages out, that's probably a loss of at least 15 more students there. So we're going to continue to get slightly smaller um, until we're probably around 275 total enrollment. So yeah. we'll see some additional decline over the next few years. And then just to recap, because I know I went through that really quickly, this is the important part is the numbers. Uh, general fund coming in as it stands right now at 4.65% over FY24. I did give you a line by line budget in the complete packet. I also gave you the last page shows central office expenditures so you can see the breakdown there by town as well. Yeah. Um, and I'm certainly happy to answer questions about anything that I presented today or we've talked about in the past. The transportation is shared, it's a bid for the entire or district and so but the 112 is for just yes correct so deerfield's portion on the new contract is two hundred and forty two thousand five hundred fifty dollars on the last contract it was one hundred sixteen thousand one hundred dollars so it's a very significant increase 
we had a little bit of a buffer in the existing budget already. We, we typically, you know, there's some adjustments for fuel charges and things like that, or, you know, maybe we get credits here and there throughout the year for various things. So we're not having to capture the full 126. It's only impacting us at 111, <laughs> um, which is still a lot. It's over 2% of a budget increase. So that's the driving force of this significant change. And I know transportation is on the um, agenda later. Right. So I don't know if we wait. Right even cro even crossover, it's part of the budget. <clears throat> right. I have a question. Um, Darius, and this is for me, but also if, just for public record for anyone who's watching. Can you explain if we get any reimbursement from the state for transportation or how that works, if at all? So we don't get reimbursement from the state because Deerfield is not a regional district. So Frontier gets reimbursement to the state, um, but Deerfield does not. Yeah. So yeah, if we did regionalize with the four towns, that would that is one of the motivators they used. Yeah. Um, to get schools to regionalize was that they would pay for transportation. They've never fully funded transportation since right. that promise, but right. it does help. It does help. Yeah. It does. So the cost for the transportation contract is for four regular school buses and one flex vehicle, which, which tends to be a suburban or a van or whatever is needed to do like the Eagle Brook Day yeah. run. Correct. Um, yeah. I talk about that later at at another meeting or something. So the contract has to be approved within sixty days. So it will be on the April agenda yep. to approve, and each individual school committee will have to approve it because we're not regionalized. Right. So, I have to go so that would be the time to ask about why. The you can ask me any question you want. <laughs> you don't I mean, have to wait. You don't okay. have to wait. You don't have to wait to that portion of. Uh, I mean, if you're talking about, it, I mean, it's, it's part of the budget, so it fits. It fits. It fits yeah, it's fits just general. I, I, I mean, I believe you mentioned this a little bit when you presented it, but um, just in terms of why such a big increase from other years. There's a summary. Did they give a summary answer? So other they than just like, like they don't. <laughs> they don't have to. Um, it's an open bid, and we only got one bid. So um, I can't, you know, the question was asked, I think uh, Annie had asked via email, when's the last time we've had more than one bid? I think three cycles ago, so 15 years, um, there was a second bid. Um, the, you know, I had a conversation with Gripo um, Transportation, and, you know, the, basically they feel the need to make a, the adjustment to their ongoing increase in their costs and it, um, trying to find drivers and, and so on and so forth. The, um, we asked, we collect the other bid from Franklin County, which is the Northern schools, they group together. They're paying more per day for bus, even after this bid. And they only received one bid as and well. And they only received one bid. So it's kind of, it's a problem in multiple areas, because where do you get, who's gonna be able to step in with 11 buses? You know, um, and so, and, and drivers and whatever to pick up immediately. So, you know, I think in Eastern Mass, they started, at one point there was buyouts and the bigger companies took over and then they have a monopoly of those systems as well. So, um, so what they are, the bid is at the market value compared to other area prices. However, it, you know, I think I said this, the email going out, um, there is no competition to drive that price down within the whole market. So the whole market's moving up because of demand. And, you know, they're having trouble finding drivers and they're having, you know, so they're gonna have to end up raising those, their rates on that up as well. Um, I feel like they've been fair to us over the years. And I think the last budget, we were expecting it to be more and it was less, right? The last, the last- Five years ago. Yeah. Five years ago was a good contract. And um, I, you know, I think my I was just curious if there is negotiation, could it happen, or would we have a executive session to discuss that, um, or you know, or just some? I mean, I know they don't have to give a justification, but they've been a great, you know, they've been a great partner for us for many many years. And it'd be nice to just know or hear, you know, hey, we're we're getting a couple new buses, or we have to add staff, just something that we had 
some discussion with residents to say, look, yes, this is a big hit. This is why, because, you know, otherwise, if we don't support them and they aren't in our community, where do we go then? Mm -hmm. You know, and um, <clears throat> so we need to make sure that they're supported as well and they, they pay their people well and they have good insurance and all the things that it takes to run that entity. So it makes sense. It'd just be good to have kind of a just a quick dialogue to have some justification of we're getting buses or this is what we felt you know it needed to be because they have been good partners for us for many many years so that's you all just, you just mentioned something I'm, I'm a question how often you said is it like a five-year contract five year. yeah okay so then this increase will is a one like how every so year there's a five percent cola built into the contract as well so okay. years two through five It'll we'll increase go by five percent. So this is the yearly. This isn't like mm. you pay them. <laughs> no, so it's, it's the market yeah. adjustment, and then they yes. get the cola. So this yeah. is the what it will the cost current year contract was structured with cola based on um, CPI, so the index, mm -hmm. um, which fluctuated over the five years. Some years there was no increase, right. and then there were a few years where it was really significant during right. COVID. Uh, it also had a fuel adjustment clause so that if diesel was over a certain price, we paid more. If it yep. was under a certain price, we received a credit. Typically, it worked out where we were paying more for mm -hmm. the fuel adjustment. So we were paying COLA and a fuel adjustment. We've built into the new contract so that it's a flat COLA so that we can predict better and budget easier moving forward. So that was That's one change in the right contract. Yeah. Um, another big thing is the structure of how they're billing us changed. So in the last contract, um, Frontier was being billed at a higher rate than the elementary schools. Now it's even. So that's why the elementary schools are really seeing such a significant mm -hmm. difference. Not only was there a market adjustment, we went from 329 a day to 465 which 465 really is where the market is. And it's actually slightly higher for the towns around us right now. Um, so it's a big market adjustment, but it was warranted. I mean, we're seeing transportation for special education is, is off the market. I mean, we're paying 350 to $400 a day for special education transportation. So right. it's in alignment with where things should be. But between the market adjustment and the change in the structure of the contract it's really hitting our elementary schools hard right. and so this wasn't really this isn't just this year i mean it's it's the first year that this is coming into our budget but it yeah. will be here yeah four or five years and then At again least. and then it'll keep just I, you're always telling us about how we're yeah. looking at the long game and mm -hmm. how you know it's this isn't just a blip this is actually a, a, a we're on another step on another level right now um, in the contract length and such we we determined that so we right. put that together as part of our bid packet that we put out hmm. and you had mentioned negotiation trevor so there's certain things that can be negotiated for yeah. example you could go to the contractor and say we can't afford $465 a day. Can right. you do $365 a day? Well, you know, no. they do that for yeah. one. Right. But two, um, that's about the only thing outside of changing routes that you can negotiate. Yeah. You can't negotiate a different contract term. You right. can't negotiate a different COLA. Sure. You can't add like back bargaining. in the fuel, fuel cause because it would change the terms which maybe another vendor might have would have wanted to be understood so yeah yeah no, i know there's bidding requirements uh, bid um, requirement law so it was mainly just a dialogue of you know what what this entails and I, some of that's helped tonight to kind of get an idea of where where things were at um and just for a town you know we're we struggle because you look at 4.65 you know, we can only raise two and a half and that's to run the whole town. And it, it gets very hard each year. Um, you know, with it, it's not just the school goes up, the police, the you know, highway, the, everything kind of goes up each year, but we're limited and we keep, we keep trying to run our budgets every year by cutting 
everything. And so we're at a point now where we just can't cut anymore. I know everyone was concerned about the roads and how much that was going to cost and the damage we got this year. But it, it, as it all comes together, it's very hard to run a town on, you know, a rate that is two and a half a year. And, and you try to do everything just keeps going up. And um, so as a town, we'll have to figure out how to handle that and try to try to set the ceiling again because we just can't run a town like this every year. It's very difficult. I think for me, it's particularly challenging, not because the number is so staggering, mm -hmm. because if they're at market value, yeah. they're at market value. Yep. And I, I don't think that, you know, their numbers, it, it wasn't like, a, oh, we're going to, no. my personal opinion is, you know, they're not right. after the town no, no. schools. Yeah. It's a business decision and yeah. they have to do what's best for their business looking at our budget and all the conversations that we've had, mm. we made really difficult decisions last year to yep. cut staffing, to keep the budget down. And now we're back at a point where it feels right. like, oh, we, made it like we did all this work yeah. and it really didn't help. So that's been yeah. hard for me to process yep. in the last week. It is, it is difficult for sure. Um, Not that that changes the number, but sharing with you. Yeah. No, <laughs> true. It's hard. I just wanted to note something that I remembered Darius saying. I don't know if it was in a meeting, Darius, or if it was in casual conversation, but um, very common in our region is they can't find bus drivers. We're yeah. having to like schlep kids to different fields because we're the only town who can have and find bus drivers. So I think that, you know, that speaks to a quality of business that's being run where they have the same bus drivers they've you know they are well known in town they you know they're they're staffed and i know it's probably been challenging for them even with that but our town doesn't suffer with that kids get to sporting events you know buses run on time they you know they that to me speaks of a quality that's really important to note i know we're talking about numbers and obviously it's a pretty big increase but it is market value plus its quality, which I think is really important to note. Have, have we looked at ridership? I mean, it's is it still way down? I mean, it has changed a lot where parents are bringing their kids or, you know, they have that ability to do that and you wind up with a big bus. I know you need it in case there's a problem, something happens at the school and you've got to evacuate, you need that space. So it's not like you can just everybody go to Vance, you know? Yeah, so um, it's a good question because it really, this has made a sharpener pencils the last week to kind of look through the different bus routes to see in the ridership. Yeah. The problem we have is that we have ridership and then we have what ridership is consistent, you know? And yeah. so, and this kind of goes into the transportation contract, but we're here, we, might as well, we, yeah. can, we can talk about it because I'm sure the public wants to hear about how that works. So there are, you know, looking at our bus routes, um, I actually did kind of went through and through Google Maps, kind of estimated the time yeah. you know, with each stop, and if the driver's having a conversation with the parent, and that kind sure, of stuff, sure. that kind of extends things. Yeah. But most of our bus routes are between thirty and forty minutes. Yeah. Um, there is one bus route, the Fleck bus, is very short. It's just Eagle Brook and back. Right. And it's an expensive run it to is. just run to Eagle Brook and back. Yeah. And I want to get into the politics. Of yes, I, I hear it. Right. Run. I hear you loud um, clear. <laughs> the in addition, there is one bus that has um, a, a kind of a daily uh, thing around 15 students on it. So, you know, we can look at combining that run with another run, but the way Deerfield's set up, yeah. you're going to different, you know, we have to go all the way up to the top of River Road all the way on that way. you got to go yeah. all the way up to the Conway on that yeah. way, and you got to go all the way down to the bridge on the other side. So these all these routes have to get covered. Um, yeah. And so I was looking at, I don't see an easy solution as like, oh, they just drove them out wrong. You know right. what I mean? Like, this is right. going to be, um, you know, we're also, you know, I was trying to look at some software that can AI it and see yeah. what we're missing. Um, right. So we're looking at that right now, too. So yeah. we do have the ability to reduce the amount of runs from year to year. So if that comes down, that's in the contract. So we can simply okay. say that um, we no longer want four runs out of Deerfield Elementary, like three, and this is the route. And we can dictate that so okay. we do have control okay. within that so we're going to take a look at it. the problem is and that would be a school committee decision right um because you're going to be telling parents that yeah, their first graders mail the bus for 50 minutes right and that is you start that becomes difficult sure. the problem we have and then 
you know, so Frontier's combined. So this is a contract where they run in, you know, the, the two runs. Frontier has a problem of, and I know people are going to say Frontier buses are even more empty in elementary because the amount of students and athletes and staying after for other events. For sure. Um, and so they're not always on them, but they have to get back in order to pick up the school, the elementary on time. Right. It's part of the gig. Yeah. So if you're going to Conway, you know, we run three buses to Conway, it's because you have to go to every corner of Conway and get back and that's a big to the problem. elementary school. Yeah. You know, um, the same thing with um, Deerfield. Right. Could that be tightened up? I think it can be. I think we're going to have to look at that, how we can tighten that up. Um, you know, ridership, you're not a regional district. So I don't, I'll tell you just the facts and not to freak out people who sure. kids ride the bus, but you're not required to provide transportation and you can charge for transportation. Yeah. Um, you know, Northampton does. Yeah. Um, and obviously sliding scales to look at, you know, that kind of thing. I'm not sure that's the direction we want to go, but no, you should know, it's, you know, what the, the ins and outs of the program are. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the other, and then the last thing is we could regionalize and try to get some money back. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, it was a healthy conversation. I appreciate the information. It helps quite a bit. So, do you have any idea what the um, fuel adjustment cost is like in the year we're in? Um, in the current year, I think we've paid an additional five or eight thousand already. Yeah. Yeah. But there have been years like pre COVID, right. we were seeing credits. But right. I'm not sure we're ever going back yeah. there anytime soon. Um, but yeah. We're definitely paying. And we won't see that. In the, in the new contract. We won't. Adjustment. No, we'll have a flat. Um, so in this first year, what the contract is, we will not pay any more than that 242, is that what I said, 242,000. Yeah. Yeah. In year two, we'll budget to add 5% because we know what the coal is going to be. Right. right. But that makes the net gain $5,000 less in a year like this. Right. Yeah, because you're not spending that yeah, extra exactly. fuel. Yeah. Okay. The factory. You know. It's averaging right now. Maybe we've spent about 4,000 mm -hmm. extra so far this year. Any, oh, I was just going to say, are there um, any other areas you want to talk about the budget or, or, um, or you have some discussions later, maybe after the year and when we get into budget? Right. So, I mean, I think, you know, chair wise, I think you should make sure there's anybody from the public yeah. has questions because it's right. kind of yeah. a question and answer period. And then we come back to discuss the current, the budget where you guys are going to, you're going to close the public hearing and then you're going to go to your regular meeting. Yeah. And in that meeting, you're going to discuss. But um, we can talk about the different options of lowering that percentage. Okay. So this is public hearing. We welcome comments and questions from the public. Anyone here? Yes. <laughs> My name is Margaret Nardowitz, and I'm the newest member of the town's finance committee. So I'm here um, as a finance committee member uh, sitting in for Julie. Um, the first thing I want to mention, I know Darius is aware of this. Um, the town is facing some critical um, budget shortfalls in the coming fiscal year. We're looking at between three hundred and four hundred thousand uh, dollars budget gap. I know there is very little appetite in the town to to have an override. So I just wanted to kind of give you a sense of where the town is at. Uh, we're struggling, and we're. Uh, likely going to have to be facing some municipal budget cuts as, as we move forward. Um, I Secondly, I want to, um, I've worked in a number of different towns across Massachusetts, and I can't thank you enough for managing your budget increases to the low percentages you have, even though in some years they have exceeded two and a half percent. You know, my experience with larger regional school districts has been uh, increases of eight, nine, 10, 16 percent. So I want to thank you for your diligence in trying to control costs. It's it's really important to the town and um, it shows that you're being very thoughtful um, of the community wide picture. So. Um, 
Uh, and uh, Julie, uh, I'm very new to the Finance Committee again. Co I, apparently, a couple of months ago, the committee was talking about a budget increase that was slightly less than two and a half percent. Um, and then it went to the two and a half percent. Can you just briefly go over the impacts of um, what reducing that down to that lower percent increase would be? So it would require us to have another funding source of some sort. Um, if we're just talking about 2.5 to, I think the first budget we presented in January was 2.36, if I remember right. So if we were talking about that minimal amount, um, we'd be looking at probably somewhere between 10 and 25,000 that we would be looking to supplement if, if that was what we were talking about. Now we're talking about 4.65. <laughs> to get us back under two is it, it's nearly did impossible we have the without den, stack reduction. I don't know if we did we have the den program in that first the round? den program was in the first numbers okay. at 2.36, but what yeah. happened when I went back through after that meeting and I plugged in um, wages for the three IAs, I felt like we were being too conservative. This right. is a specialized program sure. we were gonna need staff that are qualified to meet right. the needs of our students so yep. i increased the step that they would be on that's right. where the jump went from 2.36 to 2.5 yeah that's what i thought it was a change there a bit. so it you know if it were that minimal um, i do believe we could tap into some of our reserves after having conversation about what the impact was if we're really only talking about let's just say right. fifteen thousand yeah um to get us back down there but at this point you know we're talking about a hundred thousand which short of um staffing reductions is really difficult to do in this budget and we we didn't uh just to be clear i guess with the public during covid we had ESSER money we had different stuff we didn't hire people with ESSER money that we're now putting into the budget, correct? That's correct. Just want to make that Last clear. Last year we did, it, fiscal year 24, the current year, we are using $60,000 of ESSER funds to supplement the budget. Yeah. That was a decision that school committee made last year so that we did not reduce another staff member last right. year. Right, right. You remember this? We, yeah. we cut staff and rather, we had a, a good discussion about whether or not we made another reduction and it felt like too much for yeah. the community and yeah. too much dramatic change for the staff and the students so yeah 24 is the only year we have supplemented existing budget expenses with right. ESSER funds okay and that has been added back in in 25 because it won't yeah. be there we have seventy thousand dollars in ESSER funds available but we have seventy thousand dollars in sick buyback that we have to pay out right so right exactly that money is As gone people retire next year. yeah 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 it gets eaten up yeah. right and so i think the where the school's gonna where we're, we're gonna talk about this i mean we're talking about it now so we're just talking about it now but so if the school decides to some of our suggestions are going to be including using your rural aid and, and and some other things like that mm -hmm. is that you're just going to create a bigger deficit for next year right and so unless the town and so when a town's looking at whether or not it's going to make an adjustment over the two and a half doing an override of that kind of sort right are they expecting a windfall next year which is supposed to be a poor year revenue wise for the state okay. or are we setting up for next year um Double, we could we there. could make the argument that you're setting up the school next year to be the reason for the two and a half override yeah for the spending of the school no it's when it's, it's other issues but you hear what i'm saying you know, but sure. it, it's um uh i don't know i'm just trying to play, play that out because I if we do that kind of thing that's what's going to happen and then the school committee also has to make a decision do you put the decision on the taxpayers mm -hmm. you know do you put forward a budget that will cause you know things to be tight yeah, I'm just giving the different sure. avenues, you know, kind of coaching school committee here in that, in that area that it, the town school, if yeah. they want us to reduce the budget, reduce staffing because they disagree with where we're going on that, yeah. they can vote to do that. Sure. And it can, the budget can fail at town meeting. I'm just saying, like, yeah. cause we never, we haven't been we in this spot. Really been there. You know, we have been in other towns sure. uh, where they said, you know, we're going to put it out there and make the voters decide what kind of school they want. Right. You know, so you don't you don't want to pit the town against it. you don't want to no. have to go there but you have to have that kind of thought in your head as you're talking about do we just are we cutting to make numbers right what programs are we going to cut yep. you know that kind of stuff and so what do we want for a school yeah exactly right and then how does it fit into the other expenses of the town yeah you know what i mean and that's going to yep. be important 
and I, and I was, you know, I'm a town resident. Yeah. And everybody knows that. And so sure. the, you know, and I was at the last town meeting where, and then how people voted differently than they spoke at town meeting. And so For I understand sure. that people are not, um, yeah, you know, they're not trusting or some sort. So. I know. <laughs> we try. Can you please give me the amount, the dollar amount again, between the 2.35% and the 2.5%? Yeah, I have to pull it up. Yeah. Uh, sorry, we were at 2.43. I said okay. 2.36. Okay. Um, And it was an increase of one hundred twenty-seven thousand nine hundred forty-six dollars, and the two point five. So, so, if we were to look for other funding sources to plug that gap, you are going to be right back where you started because the share is transportation right. next year. We need to roll that out. That's that. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yeah. And we've been trying, I, well, I haven't been here, but when I was first on the board, we've been trying to look at school choice and how many classrooms we have. And so we've been slowly, you know, going from everybody had three classrooms to now, I think there's one left at the moment. And that'll cycle out um, unless we have, you know, a population growth here. I think that's where it's going to be. But we've been trying to, you know, so they've been to. 3% so increases, but with reductions in staff and, and things. So they normally would have been higher if we were, you know, normally staying with the population we did have. So it's, you know, we have done. I mean, to you're do absolutely it. correct. For the last five years, we've reduced staff through yep. mostly through, except last year, mostly through attrition. Yep. Um, and having and reduced back. those threes, the twos. Yep. And you've got one more. Yeah. It's not next year, it's the year after. Yeah. We've been um, riding time on that. And eventually right. it's going to hit. If know. the, and just also, you know, if we were to suddenly get a population boom, yeah. that could affect the state funding, then you would be eligible for SLA funding. Right. If you had the boom. So that would help us with the transition back. Yeah. Um, but we're not seeing. But it. what it, I mean, it's just messed up, but you would have that bump for one year. Right. The following year, you would no longer are growing, but you still have the position. The town would then have to pick it up. Yes. So it's it's like, you know, a little, it's a little struggle. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, more. No, no, I think we're good. Sure. I, I better understand um, yeah. the predicament the school is in. Um, I'm going to share the information with the finance committee and then I'm going to share. Yeah. We're going to have to work together to close this gap. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. so Anyone online have any questions? Seeing any hands go up. Make a motion to close the public hearing. Check on that. I second that. <laughs> Trevor, I just wondered, we don't have the thought for it here. But we do. Yep. We have switching hats, recommendations. Um, I, uh, I don't know how we would handle the 4.65. I mean, it's going to be very difficult for the town. This, uh, as you said, we're, we're in, um, we're in a huge hole already. And then we've got this, you know, we're hit with all those storms. We've had growth in our town governments as well. Town planner, you know, and those, not just the person, but now you have the benefits to go with that stuff. So we're trying to grow as a town to be able to take, take advantage of grants and all of these things. So we're all trying to like set up the town so we can be more efficient. We have st enough staff to actually do the work and get, get in grants. We have a, a really good, um, line on maybe getting some really some substantial money from the federal government for a new you know uh rehabbing one of our buildings because we need to do our town hall over it just we don't have enough room and it's an old build it's an old school it's this old school that we've all kind of been in so we're always kind of trying to work everything on a shoestring um it, it's going to be a struggle uh to to meet that number but um I, I just, without coming back to a two and a half override, it's not really just for that. We've been, I've been talking about it for two or three years saying, 
we cannot run the town by cutting every year. It just isn't possible. And we need to, um, we need to really set that bar again and roll our, it's really our, our EMS service is all paid for free cash. So meaning like, you know, each year, 300,000 or so or more has to come out of like anything that we've saved in the year or under budgeted our local receipts to try and pay for that whole ambulance service. And, you know, we did that for the first few years because we weren't sure what the budgets were going to be. But now we that we do, um, we have a solid track. We need to really fold that in. So there's a lot of things like that where we need to really say, OK, the town has cut as far as we can for so many years. The schools have done the same. We need to re, um, you know, to reset our tax rate and kind of figure out have enough money because we'd never have enough money for capital. We don't put money away for all, you know, everybody's complaint is like, well, how come you didn't fix this? How did you let it fall apart? Because we cut budgets every year just to keep the basics. So we really need to kind of have a good long conversation for a year with the town and people will be angry and all that stuff. But we, we really need to kind of explain where we're at and where we need to go for the next 10 or 15 years. We haven't done it since the 90s. So mm -hmm. Um, it'll, it'll be a struggle. We'll look for any ideas that we have over the next month or so to try and if we can reduce this a little bit some way. Um, I, I, but I do think, I think the DEN program is very important. You know, it's the first, it's really the only new initiative that I have think since I've been here before and now that you've asked for really that has been to, um, and it, and it addresses early education and it helps these kids have a good foundation so that it doesn't cost us more as the years go on it's really important to get that foundational education and social skill and all of that um taught early on the earlier the better and i think you know sure we could save thirty-five thousand or something by cutting that but you're just going to end up spending it later on on other services and more like triple it you know it's yeah and just so folks know i mean we'll talk about the budget more in a few minutes but if we can't come to a conclusion tonight you're not voting a budget tonight mm -hmm. you know it's not until later in the month and if yep. we have to have um you know the budget hearing is done it's on a tight time schedule because i have back-to-back -back meetings that night but yep. we can post another meeting yep. another meeting you know and the town can be relaying information yeah. Um, as well. So when we get yep. into how to reduce, that's when we'll be able to show where the cards are. Yep. People can decide what they uh, want, which ones are worth playing, and which ones are not. Sounds good. Um, we did have a question. I, did. I saw yeah, Scott. Um, if you're asking about the school choice vote, uh, yeah, this right now discussion is just for the budget. When we close this, there will be opportunity for public comment later on. So that would be a good time for that. Thank you. And I had a motion to close. I don't know if we had, yeah, you had a second. Yep. We were just discussing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was good. That was fine. All in favor to close the public hearing portion of the meeting. Uh, I turn to Daniel. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you all for your work. Yeah. Trying to put you. this together. Not easy. Uh, okay. Moving on to our regular meeting. Uh, next up here. Uh, Reviewing and approving the minutes of February 15th, 2004. I'll second them, <laughs> whatever they were. All in favor, approving the minutes, agree with me. Abstain. Oh, okay. I wasn't there. All right. All right. Thanks, Lucy. This is Warren. I have a warrant total for you, but I have nothing on fiscal year 24 because I've been so focused on 25. So, um, Warrants were signed electronically were 10 since the last meeting, totaling $116,519.92. Okay. Thank you. Are getting back into the budget now? I don't know. Oh, you don't? Oh, you know what? She sent out an updated one. Oh, I have to revise. Yeah. She got to revise. So it's under, so it's under, it's under seven. Uh, 
Okay. Is American Pigeon Speech? Okay. Unfinished. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Unfinished business policy. Yeah. Next. Do you have any Seven, yeah, I have principal's report and then public comment is six and then seven is unfinished and then eight is new. Must be a revised device. Oh, is that? Yeah, I'll just look at the second one. Oh, I might be looking for one. If it's not, then we should talk about it now. Yeah, I don't see that. Let me double check. I'll update it. March 4, Deerfield School Committee packet. She added the special Updated meeting. March 4. That one does not have it on it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, here we go. Here's the revised one. Call to order, public hearing, review and approve minutes, financial statement, principal's report, public comment, unfinished business, new business reports. What's under unfinished business? Is Just policies, policies, policies only. Yeah, policies A, a bunch of policies, and then remove one policy. New but business. it does have votes on those. Yeah, there's no. Yeah. She said that there's one that was titled updated for Wednesday's meeting. Updated agenda for Wednesday's meeting. Yeah, it was on March 4th. That, March 4th. Uh, it is not on here. Right. So we need to talk about budget. She said that the calendar update, there was a revision to the calendar. Uh, yeah. Right. 848. Yeah. Okay. If that's okay. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. Okay. Great. Oh, okay. All right. Um, so we said that we would come back to this. I'm going to get back to it really quickly, but uh, <laughs> we wanted to give you points of discussion for potentially reducing the 4.65. We know uh, and understand the finances of the town and that the ask of us um, <coughs> is to come down from the 2.5 never mind 4.65 so um, I'm going to share my screen just so that you have something to look at you don't have this electronically okay. yet but I rather than rattle it all off yeah. you can read it together and then um, digest it and I'm kind of just so one of the first things that we want to talk about before we get to any possible cutting of actually anything is that we do have rural aid from the current year available. We have not spent, we've spent about $10,000 of our rural aid, 87,000 remains. Okay. Um, Darius and I had, is that big enough? Yeah, thank yep. you. I was just going to ask you okay. to do that. <laughs> Um, Darius and I had planned to propose to the committee to use these funds for the front entryway project right. for two reasons. One, after the pre-bid meeting walkthrough, there was conversation about the circle mm -hmm. being including, included in the project. It's not currently, so repaving where the buses actually drive through is not part of the existing project. The contractors that came through talked to Bill, Darius, and the engineer and said, you know, you're really going to have this beautiful entryway, and here you're going to have this driveway. Well, well, well part of the, and, and part of the roundabout way is to reset the curb. Right. And so they're going to have to pull out the asphalt anyways, put concrete down and reset the curb. Right. And so then, so you're going to have a cut of two feet of new asphalt. And if you check on the way in, and it's already yeah. all spidered. Yeah. The handicap entrance is actually, handicap yeah. spots actually have huge dips in their huge puddles yeah. you know, doing that thing. So it yeah. needs to eventually be addressed. So not a great year for we had for free cash. So that's kind of kind of a yep. So there was an estimate pulled. Um, we had a contractor provide an estimate and we had hoped to put it in the bid as an ad alternate. It was going to be about sixty five thousand, I think you mm -hmm. said. Um, and every project has some type of change order for XYZ reasons. So the 87,000 between the ad alternate to do the additional paving in the circle and cover change orders because we won't want to go to the town for that. Um, we anticipated using that rural aid to right. fund the rest of that project. However, here we are with a 4.65% budget increase. So um, we are presenting a different option to you for rural aid, which would be to use the rural aid, apply it to the budget. Um, we do not know at this point what rural aid looks like for next year. Mm -hmm. The governor's budget was presented with a $15 million, which is the same level funding as the current year. So there was an assumption we would get the same amount of money. Mm -hmm. However, there's a lot of 
discussion big hole and in that budget. Um, mm -hmm. controversy over that right now because the state budget is not in the best shape. Right. So that could get potentially cut in yep. its entirety or reduced. I yep. know that legislatures are fighting to keep that, especially our local support. Well, yes. um, but we don't know what that looks like. And I'm saying that because if we use rural aid to fund the transportation and we don't have that next year, at least at the same level, that is going to go back on general funds. So we talked a little so bit about this already. Straight, you're so your next bill budget, you're going to start at 1.5%. One point yeah. just to make up that yep. right before you even get you into anything. I also remember next year's negotiation year. So we're at a two percent this year for the general contract with teachers yeah. and um IAs, you know, will it be at two percent next year? You know, who right. knows what it and when we should be prepared for it be higher than that. Yeah. Is the um that that curb cut redo or you know, the, the loop thing, um sorry, not the big loop, but the yeah. one out here. Is that a, a candidate for um, using, I don't know if you've already exhausted the ESSER funds or any other like single shot? ESSER will not program. be available. Right. Uh, that would be fully done. spent. Mm -hmm. um, we can talk about what school choice would look like mm -hmm. um, in using funds for that project from, from school mm -hmm. choice. Uh, school choice numbers are going down. Right. They're gonna continue to go down. We have about, I'm projecting about 900,000 that will carry. However, our expenses are exceeding our revenues, especially if we continue to lose choice students and the pool's and minimal right now. And, and, I, and I, I just got to, and I said it as I, as I walked across it on the way and I came in and I said, you know, we got to be careful spending money on drivers. Yeah. You know, we're a school, it's not programming, right. it's not about kids. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's yes, it's about, a, I know there's Access handicap entrances it. there. I mean, parking spots and stuff, and that's important, but if we were talking about saving programs yes put that forward but yeah there's a part of me that says it, it may not be as perfect as we wanted the front entrance to be yeah um you know i, I just want to kind of put that's kind we of where my gut goes I, I, the yeah. same mentality of the frontier we've done everything except the parking lot the parking lot is right. a disaster yeah. but everything that the students use is getting repaired fixed and right you know that kind of stuff so i don't know i just Some kind of putting that out there because i am i was gung-ho about using you know, uh, the rural aid, like, hey, this is an opportunity. You know, yeah. we're at two and a half. It's like, you know, it, it'll fit perfectly. The town, we don't have to go to the yeah. town for it, that kind of thing. But so we'll have to uh, talk about we're going to have to talk about it as, and the number could come down. That was a yeah. high estimate. Sure. He purposely was high because he yep. doesn't want to get covered you know, that kind of thing. And so, um, and we can still add it as an alternate in yeah. the bid. He, and no, then he just did, we already added it. Oh, he I, did I talked already. to him yesterday. Okay. Yes. It's going to go out um, okay. on Monday. So we're going to add that as an add alternate on the bid. And He'll give us a price, right? And and then we'll look at whatever every opportunity in the town right. to what we can do to, right? And there are I'm not going to make it even more complicated because they're buying more um, um, asphalt after right. the price comes down, right? So because they're already going to be asphalting the rest of the site, your price per tonnage is going to come significantly down because they already have the trucks and materials here. Yep. So it's we'll be we'll time. look at all that and bring that back. But I just kind of wanted to mm -hmm. uh, I don't nice know, to guess be able to put down. You know, to think of all the things that, you know, kind of look at the, all the important things. It's good not to just jump on, on one aspect, but, uh, you know, that was sort of it. But yeah, definitely want to put everything down on the table so we don't miss something important. Yeah. Okay. So using rural aid, if we did apply that to the budget, would bring us down to a 3% increase okay. over FY24. We'd chop off 1.65. And then, um, we should talk about new requests because new requests are typically the first thing to get cut out of the budget in a budget process. Sometimes they don't even make it to school committee because we realize we can't afford it. Yeah. Um, this year, it did feel like we were in a position where we could afford to add the $35,000, which is a very minimal increase to the budget overall. Yeah. Um, but if we were to pull back, this is the breakdown of that 35000 here for you. If we were to not increase the field trip equity and access line, not increase the curriculum consumable line, we could shave another 0.46 off and bring the budget to 2.54. We still need these things. We still need the consumables for the new curriculum. Um, that we're rolling out this year and next year. We still need to be able to pay for the busing. Um, and nature's classroom. Can you say what uh, curriculum consumables are, the, the books and the different things needed to teach this new curriculum? 
Exactly. So we're rolling out both ELA and next year math. Okay. In, in, in yep. Because okay. There's a, there are consumable items needed items to go with it. And, and, yep. and, just, and yeah, from books to. There's workbooks and materials that come with sure. it. Yep. That makes workbooks. sense. So if we were to pull these items off, we have to find another funding source, whether we throw them on school choice for a right. year and then try to, you know, make up for it the following year. Yeah. Um, Tina has a, a rural grant, it's called REAP, that is not rural aid, but similar, you know, yeah. she may have to rethink about how she spent that money over the last few years and use some of that to fund consumables mm -hmm. or the field trip expenses. Same thing with um, Laura, our curriculum director. She has access some, to, to some different grants. Title I, for example, yeah. um, is any of it special ed related that we can pull off of the IDEA grant. You know, we, it, it would require tightening the belt in other areas. It's not impossible. And not and, ideal. And but. one of the things that is that you do have school choice fund as a backup. If we had to come back to school committee and say, listen, we need to go, mm -hmm. we need to pull 10,000 of this 24,000. We can't do it without it. We try to do it the other way. Yeah. Um, so you are essentially using your school choice as your collateral on right. that as the backup. Yeah. So it's not, a, it brings it down. We're, we're trying to do it yeah. without cutting programming. Yeah. yeah. Um, and if if in regards to school choice, I'm just going to use round numbers without actually looking at it. But if our expenses are three hundred thousand and we're only bringing in two hundred thousand in revenue, it only is going to take us a few years to really eat up a yeah. good chunk of what we have saved. And the reason we've saved it is in the event of an unforeseen either building emergency right. or an out of district placement, which is really the highest risk. And right. this new program may help um, not have to send yeah. kids out of district, but that's right. only addressing our early, early education kids. Right. So it could right. be a resident that moves in that has sure. needs that we can't meet at any time. Right. Yeah. So um, so the other thing that we wanted to present to you is the DEN program, talking about that as a new request. So a couple of different things to consider here. Um, we proposed with uh, moving forward with three IAs and allocating the resources of the existing teaching staff, which was adding that 11-5. We could potentially move forward with two IAs, see how that goes and see if we have funds later to add an additional IA. It doesn't cut much from the budget, but it's 0.22%, which would put yeah. us at 2.32. And now we're back to that number that we started with in January, you know, roughly yeah. at our starting point. Um, the, the least popular option, I think, for us and probably for all of you is to eliminate the idea of this program in right. general. Mm -hmm. um, doing so would allow us to reduce by a grade level teaching position, which sets us up for more success in budgeting next year because we would have additional funds to cover that transportation if we had to throw it back. Yeah. So. I would advise against it only yeah. that the risk, the fact that we have five students that are residents that have qualify need. for this program, right. all you need is one for one and a half to be outplaced in that all that money yeah. and, and yeah. assistance that we were going to provide to those five students to, right. um, you know, if your, your, your point, if we had one student in the house or where we're trying to be a program with one student, you know, maybe you could roll. I think you have too many. Um, too much risk. You have, you have a lot of risk that there, there's those needs may not be able to be met in our building if we don't create a program that meets their needs next year. Right. In two years, their needs, if we can't, you know, get the intervention at the level it needs to be, then they may choose to get an intervention that's outside of our school. Yeah. So, so expensive. Uh, yeah, do you agree? Or, you know? I agree. Okay. I agree as well. We just need to be presented with all of them. No, for sure. Yes, for yes, sure. <laughs> the yeah. last one we didn't talk about, um, Darius and I didn't talk about at great length, other than really kind of looking at things we've talked about already ridership, that flex bus. The flex bus costs us about $75,000 a year. Um, so, is there any way to tighten up there? Is there um, a reason that flex bus is not just part of another route that? Up in that area or I'm told there in the winter months the large school bus yeah, can't turn can't around. Up there. Uh, yeah. Okay, um, but I think that's something that we can look into further and um in in like I said, we do, I don't have enough information to say this is a plan to change the, the bus routes, but we're gonna look at it either way. Um, do we know what that route costs us? Just that one route? The flex bus is about seventy five thousand in the new contract. 
per year. Yeah. And that route needs the full big bus. It's a, um, it's I think it's a suburban. Yeah. No, it's a mini, it's or like a mini bus. No, it's a small bus. Yeah, to get up. Yeah. To get yeah. up. The suburban goes yeah. for It's really yeah. steep. You were there yeah. the other year that you said it's a suburban. Yeah. Oh, does it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've been a suburban before. Well, it's a small bus. We're using yeah. suburban now for another one because their bus got hit by a, by a delivery truck. <laughs> oh, jeez. So Back one, oh, one oh. single bus costs us 167000 for one bus for a regular, you know, big okay. yellow school bus, and the flex vehicle is 75000 Okay. Yep. Um, I mean, it's, it's all of the things in the new request seems like not drops in the bucket, but just in terms of trying to um, solve the 100,000, 100, they're not enough to do that. And so I feel silly even asking about this, but um, is the field trips just, you mentioned nature's classroom, is that the only or are you talking about every so nature's the classroom is one of the largest expenses mm -hmm. and uh we deerfield has the highest population of students that need specialized transportation such mm -hmm. as wheelchair transportation yeah. so if any student is to participate in a field trip we need specialized transportation yeah. for, for anyone yeah. in a wheelchair uh, so I, it may not just be nature's classroom it could right. be other trips other as well trip. but nature's classroom really is the driving force behind the significance of that increase yeah. the bus cost just to go to nature's classroom never mind if we have specialized just regular bus yeah. costs is steep for the district and them so and we have more families that need assistance so sure. we're trying to provide support in that way as well yeah my thinking at the at the moment is more so i think absolutely you need to have equity and access for the for these um events that kids are going to do it it's i guess i'm looking at the harder question of all or none um and whether not you know is there any i don't i mean of course no one wants to get rid of any field trips but i'm just wondering if uh and, and again it's a, such a small portion of yeah. the overall budget thing it seems silly to uh to to get into the nitty-gritty of, of of looking at that but but it's the kind of thing where it's like well what what are what kind of not extra programming because like i said i think these getting out and seeing the world is really important for kids but um so before we would I would recommend that before we consider cutting any trips mm -hmm. or anything along those lines is to try to fund it with another funding source right. for a year. Yeah. Like I said, we yeah. have school choice. We do have a couple of grants that it, it will change how we've been spending some of our um, non-general fund money, which allows us to do a lot of other great things throughout the year that our general fund can't afford. And these are really important things. So I just talked about nature's classroom today with people uh, from when I went as a child mm -hmm. and how informative it was and um, how I cried for my mom <laughs> 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 when she sent me a letter, you know, um, but it's those it's those things that you will always remember that letter you got from mom when you were away and um, and the the counselors and the songs you sing and the it's that stuff that develops a child and it, it's such an important program that um it's just priceless for people and I, i'm sure everybody has that that experience of you know catching frogs in the pond and whatever they did wherever they went you know long lasting memories and yeah connection from generation to generation too in nature yeah and and it just Getting kids in touch with nature is really important. So, the first time away from home else. or a student Yes, yeah. it's a huge, huge developmental just uh, for kids. Yeah, it's very important. To do. So, from financial perspective, I think the rural aid and then the funding of those other two, the 24,000 with other funding sources, is an easy decision. And that would bring us to 2.54. The, the 14 for the field trips. Uh, I'm guessing that would be that's something that we kind of looking at every year, correct? Yeah. And the ten thousand for curriculum consumables is that a one-time expense or is that going to be every year? Just every year. Yeah. And we already have existing line items for this. Right. There already it's just is money in there. This is just growth. Right. Because you need this stuff. Everything gets to more adequately expensive. cover the expenses. Right.
currently what we do for, um, and I just had a conversation with Laura this week for Nature's Classroom is we scramble. Like, yeah. you know, the budget is this much money. We can pinch from here and pinch yeah. from there. So we were trying to right side this line item so yeah. that we actually have adequate funding for it right. and not have to, you know, take from five different tiny funding sources. But if we have to continue to do that, we'll continue to do that until we're in a better position where we can try to add it back in. I feel like we take a couple of weeks and think about the roadway. How to, is there any other things? Talk to Kevin. Certainly. Chapter 90, or I don't think there you can do chapter 94, but maybe, um, or just see if there's any other ways to to kind of work on that and then regroup again and look at those items. They're, I mean, the others, I think the field trips are really important, the curriculum's important, and um, and the program is really important. So it's really that roadway is about the only thing that I feel comfortable trying to figure out how to get funded. Yeah. Oh, I also, and I don't know if Tina can comment on this, but I th in thinking about the DEN program and, you know, whether to have two IAs or three IAs, I trust the judgment of the administrators to make that decision. But I also, you know, it's a brand new program. We're going to be providing services to some kids who have some pretty significant medical needs. So I I don't know if like that's the place to like save 0.22% either, especially if we want this to work and we want, you know, we want to keep kids in district. I think it makes sense to be cautious about the staffing yeah. there, given the needs of the kids who are there. But I'm that being said, I, I trust that Tina um, and her team would be able to tell us that based on what's coming up. Um, but it seems like, a risk not worth taking either in some ways and I, and I think and you bring up a good point that we also have to be careful you know between the ia and then will we have enough money to cover the field trip and we're using you're basically saying you're gambling that you're going to be able to cover this stuff and not use school choice mm. so it is almost the same as saying let's use school choice to cover these things yeah but administration really tighten your pencils we don't want to use a lot of it because right. that's what it kind of feels like. So you just have to really know, because we're not truly cutting anything no. as of yet, as of so yet. far in the discussion. Right. You know, if we say we're going to go to two IAs, and it's the second week of September, and Tina goes, we're not meeting, yeah. we can't do this with two IAs, guess it. what? You the only funding it. source we have is school choice. Right. We'll go to that. It goes, it's going to hit even further. Yeah. And, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and so that's the, that's the only thing is about, like, where we're moving from three because we can get to three with yeah. using the rural aid, right? right. That money right. is in hand. That's where you're talking about using this year's rural aid, right? Money, okay, so um, we can get to there. That's that extra half, that extra half percent. Yeah, you know, and we we might be able to come up. You know, given the rest of this month, we'll look at bus routes as yeah. well. We'll look yeah. at you know, and we'll talk out. about it more. I, I think you know, kind of going what you were saying before. Yeah. We'll you know, we can see if we can make the other half percent. Right. Also, see where the town lands. Yeah. Um, you know the front, the front circle. I don't want that to. I don't want that to shadow all the other kind of needs because right. it really. You know, it's a driveway, guys. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, I and I understand it really should be done. You know, right. if we end up doing the cut, if we end up doing the cut, you know, four feet into that drive into that curve, right, is where it ends. Yeah, it could be done the, the following year or the year after. Right. It doesn't have the big same splash effect because it could be like right a little bit of a lipstick on it, it you know. Should, but yeah, it, it, it is just you know done at once. Yeah. Okay. But it, it can be done. You'll yeah. we'll get that other part done. That the yeah. handicap accessible part. We'll, you know, we'll be using the you know the grant that we have for the rainwater and that and so on and so forth. Yeah. So. So do you feel like we need a vote now on that or we can wait a couple of weeks and kind of talk things through? You're not gonna vote on that until we get the okay. we're gonna award a bid and then no, I mean, the actual like numbers. this whole <clears throat> you don't need a vote tonight, well, right? I would like to know Correct. what you want me to present at the vote. You know, are we do we want to look at different options? Do you need to see this actually laid out in a different format? Is there something you're one hundred percent comfortable with? I mean you know, let's use the I'm rural aid. I'm comfortable know. using the rural aid right now to get us to three. Um and then if we can find some other help to restore that a bit, um with either talking to Kevin or so like see what the bids come in, that kind of thing, figure out a way to kind of 
supplement that row A back because you're going to need it next year. And I mean, it's just going to be, well, and that's we the, don't know what's coming. And I also want to put out there, I would also recommend that on the 26th, we move the meeting to five. Yes. So that it's not a public hearing. I don't know if people right. can do it, but that way we'll have a full hour and 40, we'll have an hour yeah. and a half before I have to run out and go. Because right now, the back, like back meeting with, I could also move, um, oh, no, right now you're at seven. Oh, we're at seven? Okay. We at least have six. Yeah. Wait, this is gonna have to move the five because they have the same problem you guys have. If not, yeah. they're maybe in they're in, they, they're, they're in worse shape school budget wise, maybe not town wise. Yeah. Um, so you guys will have analysts, you guys will have plenty of time at seven o'clock. So we can talk for okay, it'll be a bit yeah, later. We'll, yeah, just be late. We'll but... Coffee, but the uh, <laughs> we can keep going if we have to. And okay. there's no you guys don't have a binding thing if we're as long as we're communicating with the town what we're doing. Yeah, if we come to the 26th and the town needs more time. Yeah, the school budget can be adjusted all the way up to town meeting floor. Yeah, that's true. So just kind of yep. knowing, but the town needs to know where we stand, right? So they can budget off that. So, yeah, um, but they do. you know, and I think we're talking enough um, right now that we that we can kind of communicate that. Yeah. Does anybody? Oh, sorry. Because, yeah. Just one. I, I just want to follow up to something that you mentioned earlier. You said that you're using ESSER funds um, this year that will not be used next year for recurring expenses. Is that the only um, non-recurring funding source that you are using moving into next year at this point before we look at the rural aid? Yes. yes. We so use school choice for recurring expenses, but we've been using it for years and years and years. Okay, so when you look at structural deficit for next year, you'd be starting at 87,000 if you decide to use the rural aid. Okay, okay, yeah, I just wanted to be clear. Uh, yeah. Current year? This yeah, in this budget. I didn't increase it though. It, I just and um mirror the same expenses from the prior year. We've been paying forever. It's like two hundred and fifty thousand plus will... some of the project stuff. Okay. But there won't it won't cause a deficit to the budget because we've been we won't have to offload it. But so it is not back on the budget. Not next year. <laughs> it could, if our choice numbers get so low, and if we burn through that nine hundred thousand that we have of reserves. There could be a point where we have to put expenses on budget, but, but not there in is, 25. We are spending school choice, which is technically non reoccurring, yeah. um, up to 200000 yes, So I just wanted to kind of make that clear because we are using that within the budget. Yeah. We just have been doing it for so long, as you just said. We and use some 70. other grants as well, but there's no risk of those you know, going away. You know, We get a special education grant that yeah. part of a staff salary gets paid out of, but that should be pretty routine. I don't expect any other funding sources. Uh, the ESSER is is anyways. Yeah. It was this was just whatever was left, and I think the choice was to use to do the sick buyback for the retirements with it, so it wouldn't hit hit the budget. Otherwise, those are we'd such be hitting huge, budget or right. asking town to pay exactly. for it. Exactly, so such a huge amount each year. Or but each yes, time. if we did not get the same rural aid, which there is some risk of that, we would be at an eighty seven thousand dollar debt. Okay. Thanks for clarifying yeah. that as well. Yeah. 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 Um, so, how is everyone feeling about eighty-seven thousand from rural aid and other sources for twenty-four thousand at this point? Uh, I, like we were well, using rural aid. Yeah, so we were getting the three using rural aid, right? Yeah. And then I think I was wanting to hold. That's where I was kind of wanting to hold at. I think um, this is the and then if we could find talk to town if there's you know talk to kevin in his budget like is there any other magic we can do to help with that roundabout to kind of help push back some of that rural aid but that the and then and then if we get to town meeting and like we may have to just move some of that that 24 to to school choice but i it's just i think I the number that we need to have coming out of this meeting is that we need to tell the finance committee and select board that right now we're at three. Yeah, that's that's where I feel. And like. yeah. to start playing their number around three and communicate yeah. back to us where we're, you know, we'll continue to keep that communication, but we have moved it from the four point blank yep. down to three. Yep. And this is where we're at now. And what is that, you know, have discussions about that final push and we'll get more information on those other kind of things. We can have that discussion at the next meeting. But yep. We're going into that meeting at three. Uh, three. Are we going to reduce it further? 
Yeah. Could, and these are we have talked about the different things, but, but we're it's already. not going to be higher than three because we're Correct. at least go to that number. Correct. I, but you have to make a decision. I'm suggesting you yeah. That's guys make that decision. Kind of where I feel at the moment. I just wanted to make sure I'm understanding the rural aid because you said that's sort of a. It's not that it's a necessarily a one-time thing, but it's not a guarantee that we'll have that amount next year Correct. or any other year because they have to give it to us, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're just sort of hoping that we have it it's later. A, it's a brand new okay. program, really, okay. that, that our legislators fought for. And, and that's when we go to work and we talk to everybody and say, we need it next year. So, so, right, so worst case scenario is that next year the state doesn't choose not to fund the rural aid and yeah. we come in a deficit starting and our budget is, is at 5% next year without having to do major cuts. Right. And then we have to go to the town with a much higher one. Maybe the town's in a better position. Because we or covered. maybe it, maybe it pushes the the two and a half. You know, because we it, it, you know that kind of thing. But that's going to be there's a, so many things at play for next year's budget. Yeah. The major, most major ones that we don't have a uh, we don't have an agreement with the associations right. for next year's budget. Right. Not next year, the year after budget. Yeah. Sorry, the twenty six budget. That's so and so, who knows what that number is? And we know that's one of the largest fluctuating numbers for um, budgets. Yes. And so. But there's kind of, it's kind of like this is a pocket of money that we need to use as wisely as we can now because we have it. And, if, and you know, and, we all agree that that's... And we're, we're taking that first bite out of a five-year yeah. transportation with rural aid. Okay. And will we have enough next year to take that bite again? I don't know. No. Yeah. You know, I mean, we had, you know, Shelly and I have been talking about rural aid. I think I may even said in this, in this, to this group, but, we, you know, part of it was going to start being used to offset the budget. You know, I mean, that's yeah. the idea because the state is not, because right. Right. we're held harmless, we have to start using that money. And, you know, we weren't planning on it this year, but we were right. kind of saying, well, next year, maybe we use 50% of it because right. at least we can't, we'll think they won't cut the whole thing the following year. They'll cut, maybe they'll reduce it slightly. Right. So we were, we have this mentality, especially in some other districts that are, um, even tighter than Deerfield was this year, um, to use 50% because we're not rolling the dice completely to the following right. year. Right. It's a bigger dice roll for the following year, but the yeah. but the town's also asking us, so we're kind of working with the town on that. Yeah. Um, we also didn't expect, or I know I didn't expect that there was potential for it not to be funded at level from the state. I yeah. with the way that they've pushed right. this five-year plan of yeah. rolling out to what 61 million was that what it was supposed to be over the, five years and then to have it in year two already at risk be potentially cut is it's and, it, and it really got beat up it got government. beat up on yeah this past week it got beat up so it's we don't they're not even they're talking they canceled certain languages within the um within the bill the rural aid bill which has a lot of other things not just the funding involved because all the power is in urban centers yeah that's what we fight all the time out here yep. all right yep. so three percent moving forward at the next meeting is that oh, what i'm hearing has everyone had uh, let's, to yeah on let's, what was everyone's thoughts on it no oh, i i agree yeah. yeah i think going down to three is a good start i, I yep. don't want to underfund the den program that's right um, that's not fair to a new program right and it feels like it could make we could get revenue at some point because we have a good program like that too mm -hmm. smart smart investment and it's smart true. investment in our children so that's right maybe there's other students who will want to come here because of it yeah. yeah any do you have thoughts on the using the eighty-seven thousand from the rural aid to get us to a three percent budget I, yeah i think i'm just I, we can't predict the future. I'm a little bit concerned about next year, you know, and yeah. what that might look like for us this same exact time and making hard decisions. But, you know, I think we there's only so much we can do. So I think it makes sense in this context. I also agree. I'm happy to use that totally. So, okay. So that'll be our, to... our guidance to you. And then we'll see what, what else can happen. Do you need a vote on that or a, no? No, okay. guidance. Okay. Sounds okay. no, good. Nothing's official yet. Yeah. Well, thank you for 
all that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Okay. And that is the end of the financial statement. Yes. Yeah. Not cutting you off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're still on the financial. Statement. <laughs> All right. I'll make this. Um short but sweet because i'm excited to announce that sue barowski occupational therapist at des was honored with the pioneer valley and excellence teaching award um, her dedication to students and colleagues is um just immense and um it does well deserve the award so we're really excited for her also just two quick updates on our dei committee and our um, behavior committee our dei committee i shared with you the vision statement um, and we're in the process of analyzing data from educators and administrating student surveys with an emphasis on inclusive community and our behavior committee is really immersed in ongoing research and it's specifically geared towards enhancing students social emotional and well-being if you have any questions around that i'm saving the school short recommendations i'll look on there for where that lands on the agenda. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, um, next up, we have public comments. Is there anyone virtually who would like to in? Yeah, Lisa. Hi, thanks. Um, first off, I just want to thank you all. That's all that budget is not easy to get through and um, I really appreciate everybody's um, really thoughtfulness with it. It's um, anyway, it's a lot. Um, so actually, I'm a special education teacher, but I'm speaking tonight as one of the co-presidents of Union 38 Association, Educators Association. And I know that Darius is going to be sharing a um, one or two options for the calendar for next year. And we surveyed our members and I just wanted to share what the membership was hoping for. So there were a, Darius, are you sharing both options? Yes. I, okay, I just wanna make sure before I go into this. Um, so the way that the winter holidays fall, they're in the middle of a week and there are a couple of different options and one is to allow the educators to have two weeks um fully off during that winter break and the other i believe is for seven days and when we surveyed our membership over 60 percent of those who responded would prefer the two weeks off in the winter time so i just wanted to give you that information as you look and decide on the calendar for next year any questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Lisa. I thought Scott Nicholas yeah. texted yeah. that he wanted to say something Any about this. Is it? Hi. Um, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, this is Kelly Nicholas. He went and took the kids upstairs to go to bed. Um, but I'm not very familiar with school committee, so I apologize. Um, but I do want to thank everybody for your efforts here. And it's very eye-opening to see a school committee meeting, so I don't attend them regularly. Um, but I'm mainly here for the school choice. I have a son in the first grade who will be in second grade. That is school choice. And he absolutely loves it. And he's made great connections. Um, and so we're here because my daughter is in preschool and we're looking to put her into Deerfield at the kindergarten age. So, um, yeah, so that's mainly why I'm here. And I just wanted to put it out there that we love that Deerfield does school choice and our kids have excelled and they've really turned around. Um, my older son has an IEP and he really has excelled at the school, whereas my daughter has social anxiety. And this is the first time in three different schools that she's actually opened up and has talked. She has a big talking issue where she doesn't talk to strangers, which I guess is a good thing, but um, <laughs> she has really excelled in her one year this year at preschool. And so 
we're here hoping that she can go into kindergarten at Deerfield. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Thanks, so. Nice to hear. Yeah. All right. I'm not seeing any other hands up. All right. Unfinished business. Okay. So the first thing we are doing is <laughs> we are voting to um, modify policies. KCD, KHA, LBC, EHAA, EHP, GBEE, JICJ, KDC, KDCD, EFC, EFD. Would anyone like to make a motion to approve those changes? I'll move. A second. Any um, discussion before we move the vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, and also um, voting to remove policy KCD. Make a motion to remove KCD. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Thank you. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I just wasn't sure if I was still taking your <laughs> Okay, and then on to new business. Discussion on the school choice for next year. So, yep, I think everybody has a chart in front of them. So, as you can see, our average class sizes are around 17 to 18, which is where we typically like to keep our class sizes, especially with consolidating. You'll see that for some bigger classes, the 20 and 19. Because of course, when we consolidate, that's where we get some of our students that actually move in, <laughs> our residents. So they're going up. With the numbers that we have, we really are looking at our only uh, only available slots would be in fourth grade, where we have 15 and 15 in each classroom, and where um, there we're recommending um, four or less, and all the other ones we're moving a little wiggle room in there of one or less. So the two stars next to the two is just letting you know that that's the grade level we consolidated for the program. Do you have fourth grade applications? It does consider, right? Yeah, yeah we do. Sorry, I'd have to get the number on that. I know we have at least one. Are we, um, so there are four pending applications for kindergarten you just you, you you're this you didn't read for here i updated it after that so i handed them out after oh okay oh this was sorry. for my packet okay yeah sorry, sorry. sorry. i printed okay. it after oh i just want to make sure they weren't confused sorry yeah no i told the committee i decided to do that sorry <laughs> <laughs> I don't have one. So that's oh, why that's why you're looking at my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> no privacy so, at this point. Uh, I guess I'm just trying to understand. So, um, can you so go? Those numbers are um, as of like three weeks ago, the numbers on the um, pending applications. And then, um, are you saying we don't have a spot? Is that right? Kindergarten right now projected um, enrollment is 17 and 18. And Trevor, you know what kindergarten yeah. looks like and how the flexibility is on that and then the enrollment. So. And then, um, so really it's only fourth grade. And it's the four fourth. applications are the existing preschoolers, current preschoolers. Right. We have one existing current preschooler. So, so they're in addition to that four, or they are they are is no, that one existing that's one included. that's included. part of? It's included. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, first grade, it was sixteen and fifteen, so I recommend opening with one. Is that because it's first grade? And <laughs> yeah, we like to. We we had talked about previously how we keep our class sizes a little smaller in the younger grades, so that we can give them some targeted intervention. Um, and then we kind of open it up in the in the upper grades to about 18 and then typically that ends up being about 20 by the time there's some movement but because we've consolidated classrooms and um, made some budget cuts 
that's that has increased our class size over the younger years. So typically we wouldn't have 18 in kindergarten. We've had we've run at about 15, 16, and then it's Right. Mm -hmm. So when when this has a, a one next to it just means that you don't have you, space you or could, you could take one you could take or one or eight or, 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 or none. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. You know if she goes to take one, she has to do a lottery system. Yeah. Got it. It's not just no. uh it's a lottery with preference given to a sibling. Right. Okay. I was gonna ask about something. Yeah, that's what I was curious because we typically we try. You can, but you can't always. You right. always yeah. and, and I think that's part of where, where people are on tonight because yeah. preschool has, it's almost been an automatic, we go into kindergarten, but we've had three sections. And Correct. we, and we, we as could. a team, have decided that we're going to reduce the number of school choice students that we're taking. This is the impact that it has. Right. Right, right, right. But are we at risk of losing that family entirely? Mm -hmm. Because the children in the same school Correct. which means then we're not gaining money right. we're also losing money they yeah. may not have an application to fill that spot yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and then we're at 17 and 18 which is okay and right. kindergarten is this like moving target that's the projected could we have less could we have more yes you could have more yeah. so you don't plan on filling that Making that decision until much later in the spring, right? Because you got to wait and see. Right. I'm saying what I right. yeah. I'm like giving a, you a softball, what I know, but I'm trying to say that. Yeah. We do like a rolling acceptance too. We yeah. kind of like monitor where we are and then we'll do a rolling acceptance for the year if we, when we're, our numbers start to kind of solidify. Right. Um, so, reminder tonight that you have, every year you are required by law to um, make a designation if you are a school choice yes. and accepting school choice yes. and may give recommendations to. How many per grade level? Yeah. So it's kind of like a double. Yeah. The double but one you have to establish your school's way school because I gotta report that so to Jesse. I would make the first motion to um continue being a school choice school. Right. Didn't see that coming. All in favor of that? Um and then we have to recommend to how many openings or leave it for a recommendation for Tina's recommendation. So you were, so I am clear you the, the less than, it is both less than and it is equal to. So the one is a possibility. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then you can say, well, it looks like you could take two. Yeah. And I guess that's the question can you? Yeah. I mean, or is that not? Which one do you want to do? Yeah, I would do a rolling. Okay. I would do a rolling. We do a rolling in kindergarten. I know. I was just didn't know if they, if they, would, they could say, you bring them the numbers in May and they can. Oh, that one. Oh, or they were just kindergarten. Yeah, I guess we don't do it that way. Yeah, yeah. Have we done separate ones? Those actual numbers later in the year, once we come to the Since I've been here, we've always voted here, and then it's been a rolling though. So if you could say four or less, I can choose to take one. I can we can give it right. the number of yeah. the year as a roll as we roll out to the year, and I can say, oh, we have no, we have only three. Three So it would be comfortable making a motion to approve the yeah recommended the recommended yep I do sorry can I I was just, just debating that to you don't know whether I mean obviously this is a recommendation so I just didn't know I guess I'm not sure exactly how much wiggle room because I don't want it to you know I agree the principles of the principle. I agree with, you know, at the same time, I, I feel like being able to uh, let as many children and families participate as we can. So I don't want to press it, but yeah, what's the gamble? Um, I was just rather like, exactly yeah. like what class sizes are you Right, thinking? exactly. Yeah. Because, yeah. 
we just don't we, we can't anticipate who's going to move in and sure. they're going to move in and right. Right. that's why we try to keep it at 18 and then you see mm -hmm. us bumping up against 20 and someone right but to erica's right. point if it said less than or equal to yep. two yep. you as the administrator right. would still yes. make the decision we still want to give take. you yeah. that yes. ability yes i think for first grade is that what you're talking about yeah yeah yeah, yeah. just yeah um Part of it being that okay. that's the beginning, or first or second, uh, kindergarten, I guess, um, maybe it was what I was thinking. Uh, can, well, first has the most space. Um, right. Kindergarten is yeah. maxed. So, yeah, yes. I mean, I trust your, sorry, having a larger number in kindergarten doesn't yeah. have an impact because it, oh, well, it does. It allows me to make make the changes as enrollment kind of settles mm -hmm. out. So mm -hmm. um, if yeah. less than or equal to four and enrollment settled out and I can only take one, but maybe I can take four. But if enrollment settled out and we say less than or equal to one, I can only take one. Yeah, so, I guess I would want to give you flexibility. And only why four is there when you guys come up with any number and why I'm saying four. Sure. Well, I mean, there's fours on there. So. <laughs> yeah. If there yeah. was a situation yeah. where yeah. you were in a position where you wanted to add more, if you could use that later in the year, or that I actually don't know. Can we revote the amount later on in the year? Can I come back and say, like, uh, mm -hmm. we would like to add more? Because mm -hmm. the recommendation doesn't get submitted to Desi, just that you are a school choice. School right. Gets submitted exactly. Yeah. And then we really want you to be able to. You just have to make sure that your process is equitable. For Correct. So yeah. that, you know. Um, if you denied someone that you would allow them to you have to, to contact reapply. everybody you sent a letter and said you're no longer allowed that we are reopening okay. the drawing okay. and you want your name put back in right you just have to make yeah. sure that everybody has that opportunity okay. yes yeah, so i might be thinking of giving you more wiggle room to two for a and one but i don't i mean that's other agree i just like we're a group um unless I I do. I just I'm nervous about the class size for sure, sure. kindergarten. Um, so, but to give you that flexibility, yeah. and then yeah. obviously you can just take one or none. But right. um, yeah. no, I trust your judgment. I want to give you the room you need. Um, and obviously, it's you know there's room in in fourth grade, so right. for sure. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. And then uh, everything else looks pretty next. Yeah. Because again, you could have a family move in. Right. Yeah, they want to keep the families we have. Yeah, exactly. And right. if you can, if you, yeah. yeah, siblings, it's always good to keep them all together, right? Um, so maybe I would I would recommend changing these recommended openings to two for kindergarten and first grade, and leave the rest the same. Yeah, that's I know where I was going. So. Yep, perfect. Still the less than or equal. Yeah. To yeah. Yep. Thank you. Great. Sure. Okay. So. Charles, do you make a motion? Yes, I'll make a motion. Okay. Yep, I'll make a motion to um, to accept school choice recommendations with the exception of revising the ability to take two at kindergarten and two at or zero to two at kindergarten, zero to two at one at first grade, and leave the rest as recommended. Nice second that. Yeah. Should we take a call? Um, yeah. Okay. We can, yeah, we, we can vote. Yeah, yeah I think she's in. All right. All in favor of accepting? Aye. Yep. Oh, okay. Oh, public room. Annie, I didn't see your hand. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Sorry, I didn't look at the screen. Have the time. Are you good with a vote, Mary? Uh, what I did was <laughs> changed it to um, to, to, to allow uh, two at kindergarten and allow up to two at first as well, um, but leave it up yeah. to the administration. Yeah. We had a motion in a second, and we'll close with that because that you're back just in time. Yep. So we get an eye. Okay. Great. Thank, Thank you. Thank very you. Much. <laughs> Perfect. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, the next up, we're looking at the uh, 24 25 school calendar and school committee calendars. I, I guess I didn't understand yeah. the request. Maybe that was um, so the school calendar 
there are two different versions in front of you. Okay. And please know that the, the preschool start date was a new calendar sent out to everyone. There was an error on that and was corrected. Um, but one of them, the two of the same start time, the start date of the school year, and but the um, December break, December, Christmas, New Year's break, um, there's two options. Either to come back on the second, and come back for Thursday and Friday, or to extend the break until the 6th of January. Well, coming back on the 6th of January. Yeah, the 16th day through it. It'll be coming back on Thursday, the 12th day break. With the weekends? Yeah. Yeah, yeah and it's really 12 and a half days. Yeah. Friday's a half day. So you're not making that decision tonight. Um, it's kind of the first read to kind of digest and talk okay. it over with people. Um, the reason why I'm bringing both forward to you is because it is it's one of those things all the school committees are kind of dealing with right now. Yeah. So some have already dealt with it, um, and it's kind of going both. I don't have a survey of where it's going, but some are doing the full and some are doing the not. And you're going to hear, as we talk to other school committee members, it's going to probably be a lively discussion. Sorry to put it on your laps that way, but um, there's some that are um, see the break and, you know, let's extend it the full time. And it gives families that, that opportunity to that. And then the other side is that's too much time and there's going to be families who have trouble with child care and affording child care and taking yeah. time off and that kind of stuff and aren't going away for a two-week vacation because that's not a reasonable right. expectation. So um, and it, it, it's going to be the – so I, mean, I would say go and talk to people about it and yeah. get feedback. And, it pushes it the end of the school year from the 18th to the 23rd as well, correct? I think that, and I think that's what I gathered. With um, snow days. With snow with, days. With so snow it depends days. on the snow days. Yeah. Yep. Um, oh, I see. 180 yeah, versus 185. Got it. Right. So, so it just we, pushes. We just, and we put that on there to remind people that the last day of school isn't the last day of school. Right. <laughs> you could have yeah. some snow days. Sure. Um, yep. Was there no It'd be the 13th or the 11th or something like that. I guess. Let me tell you my talk to Yeah. Yeah. And so the other thing was, and the reason, one of the reasons it does go to the association is that um, according to the contract, they do not have to start until the last Wednesday in August. And to come back before that, we need their permission. And so we got their permission to come back before that. And they also gave feedback. That's where why the association also is chiming in as well. I mean, we want their feedback as an employees, but also they gave us permission to come back earlier that week, which has turned into a tradition, but is still yep. there, um, still within their rights within the contract. To, to, yep. to okay. So we'll go to the meeting with two calendars. Yep. We're not looking for any feedback right now. <laughs> but just if you see errors or other concerns, yep. you know, I don't need which way you're leaning or any of that kind yeah. of stuff, but if you say or concerns regarding the overall calendar, it's, it is based um, very similar to this year's calendar. Um, and so forth, you know. Yep. Things, uh, I'm feeling kind of um, like, why don't I remember what these mean? But the color coding, um, the um, Fridays are the early release, are the um, so light blue, yeah. Um, the purples are days off, and okay. the yellows are dates to know, the orange is half days, yeah. Yeah, orange well, that's the uh. I'm not sure if that's yellow, that's um, okay. muted orange on my paper. <laughs> yeah, muted orange, yeah, or the half days, right. and then the early release are the teal. Yeah. 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 Teal, thank you. Yep, thank you very much. Yes. Uh, just, not like blue. So yep. there's not usually a lot of calendar controversy year to year, and this could be a big topic, as you just said, but what happens if they don't all four vote the same calendar? And I rip up the calendar and I yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> because you thought wanted... you had five years with me. <laughs> <laughs> you would, <laughs> we would have to. Uh, yeah, it could be ugly. Yeah, we yeah. If, if it. We'll find a if it's a split. I think we would, we would probably recommend to go to the same poly, the same mode as the superintendent selection at the joint <laughs> thing and kind of go with majority. Yeah. If everybody agrees to that prior to right. That, we don't have a way of doing it and no. your bus contract is set that you're running at the same time as frontier yes exactly and if you get off the same some more money. if you get off the same schedule as frontier whatever your last day of school is families are going to do whatever they want. yeah <laughs> you know what i mean it's going to turn into chaos yes um, 
Just it is a good, like it's a, a good point. Like Thank you, Shelly. Yeah. Yep. It's going to be fun. I can't wait. <laughs> She's like, it has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> other watch. than, other than if, we go, if we go long enough hard. to Juneteenth, you're going to have to pay for that holiday. Yes. And that's going to cost you about $5,000. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Like, does it seem like that should be a, we should be voting as a district for calendars regardless moving forward? That's why, well, that's why we do it at the joint meeting so that, so that there is no splintering, um, that everybody, and even in the past, it's been like, we're all agreed. They, they, so they, they all yeah, kind of voted in, in together. as well as the, um, so that's why we do it there. But Shelly brings up a good point. If Deerfield says one way and Sunderland says another way, you know, we have to agree what the process is going to be to have an outcome. And it's a good thing, like a calendar. I hope no one's like, you know, if you really are going to take those last those other two days off because you're going away as a family, then who's we'll stopping stop you anyways? Yeah, no you, know, you. Um, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. Um, and hopefully, you know, the things that we're going to have to consider, how many people are going to take those days off, or, you know, that kind of thing. But, but yeah, that's what we're doing at the joint meeting to, so that it isn't done secretly where we go, and whoever votes, and, and I've talked about this, and some of these policies, whoever votes first wins. Because everybody else is like, what? We can't, if we go the opposite, then we're the one, we're the district that, um, so that's oh, what we're doing not, at the joint meeting. not a joint committee vote. Mm -hmm. Each but committee votes. Each committee votes the calendar for their school year because you're your own district. But yeah, I think what I'll say prior to it is if we had a disagreement, then we should use the formula that we, and, that's one of those things when we talked about the superintendent agreement thing that we didn't agree upon opening up every decision. Let's just let's just handle the superintendent thing and yeah. we'll develop this. But this is a good example where I mean, hopefully there's people care, but hopefully they're not diehard care. <laughs> you know what I mean? It is. Um, yeah. All right. All right. And then also included is the um, the next one on the agenda is the uh, school committee. We have to kind of pre-plan it so that you know I just don't take all the good nights. You know what I mean? So, that there, so there's some kind of proteins. There's some equitable over who's first and second. Yep. Um, and that kind of stuff. And um, the only major change is that we didn't do a December meeting this year. It was a new thing. Yeah. And that's the only thing to consider if that actually. If people thought that was okay or if they thought I thought it was fine. I still have meetings anyways, but it, there was less and December's a crazy month between um you know different holiday events at schools and you know that kind of thing. Um in that type time frame. So anyway. Sorry, I was just going to ask where the calendar for the school committee is. Is it on the same email? From the back end? Oh, okay. From the back end. Yeah, that's the last day. What's the It was in the back end. Yeah, it's the I have to say. Do the vote of the SOA plan? Yes, we're going to look at the SOA plan and vote. No. Yes, so the state requires that um, the district submit a student opportunity act funding um, district plan. Yep. And um, so we need to get that in order for them to release the money. So remember, SOA is just chapter 70. Yep. And Shelly's got a really old computer because I asked I don't her to tell what's me. Happening with this. So as I said last night at um, Frontier, this is a check the box for the state legislators to say that they're not going to give schools a bunch of new money through SOA without some checks and balances. Yeah. So there's the short form and the long form. So we have the short form because we don't get any money. Right. So our increase, they want to know how I'm going to spend roughly 235000 or something. Oh, gosh, no. Um, no. Oh, you are 200. Well, overall, the full chapter 70. Oh, oh, in that they just, they just the gave district right. number. So you have your full chapter seventy, but it's like eight thousand dollars. So the eight thousand dollars um, more, more the than, the previous, than the previous year. They require that I fill out a report. And oh, I, I'm no, saying I'm only telling you all this additional information because it's annoying. 
Okay, so they give us funding to for our operating budget, but yeah. because they're giving us so much money, they want accountability report of how we're going to spend this eight thousand dollars. So, but so instead of you know reading, you can read through the whole thing if you want. Um, it is. Um, I had one superintendent said in the meeting, I let the state know that I put as much effort into this as they put in the funding, the, right. the additional it's funding they gave. Perfect. Which was perfect. Kind of, it was it was a great line we made great so loud. But yep. we really. Um, the SOA for the elementary schools is, if you look at the very last page of it, it yep. talks about what your measuring goals are. And so um, that kind of summarizes the goals, I think, the easiest without having to read through all this. But yep. we are implementing high quality instructional materials for adoption, um, adoption and implementation of our new ELA and math curriculums. Yep. Um, and then we're going to be looking at uh, measuring and monitoring the increase of efficiency and um using classroom walkthrough tools and we are going to be was well, measure the usage and improve um literacy screeners and adoption of benchmarks of comprehensive early literacy curriculum so those are the three things that we're going to be using as measures for the elementary the other three things are um with the high schools using the middle and high school is using the my cap the innovation pathways and I de i'm sorry decrease absenteeism is also yes. a measure that we're going to be looking at um as well because they want you have to have measurable goals as part of the funding component. so you know some cities that got you know they got millions of dollars more they wanted to know how they were using the additional millions they got each right. year um and so they wanted so you can see how i guess it makes sense there not as much for us but um we did put together a plan that really just it, it easily fits into what we're doing with our school improvement plan and with our what's happening inside the classroom Make a motion to approve the Student Opportunity Act plan as presented. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, Trevor, for moving straight along. Stuart. Uh, it was funny, I asked you left a couple years ago. The first meeting after you were gone was a long pause every time you need to make a motion. <laughs> like, I think it was Trevor who to make a motion. <laughs> Okay, yeah. um, and this is for reports. Um, I'm going to brief because I know we've been here over two hours already. Uh, I do have a couple things to share for the, um, the chair. Uh, first, I want to let you all know that uh, following the death of Nick Benedict, a very young student in Oklahoma, there was discussion among the chairs that um, it would be nice to have a policy in place specifically um, protecting uh, the rights of trans and gender students. Yeah. Um, and we looked at a few, and none of them had quite the word we wanted. So there was conversation about. To, Policy has something to do it to the uh, anti racism and equity committee get some input on this, get particularly input from the community, trans and gender transforming members of the community. Yeah. Uh, so that's where we're at. So it's, okay. It's happening. In the works. Yeah. Uh, Good. And of course, gender transforming and trans are already protected by our current policies. This is just specifically affirming the dignity of those students. And Absolutely. Yep. Uh, that's Thank happening. You. Uh, the second thing is. Uh, the superintendent evaluation you all have received. I tried to use it and I get I couldn't like it's I not would just pass the first stage. Yes. Yeah, it's been fixed. Okay, great. I'll <laughs> jump back in then. Thank you for I kept going in a circle and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. oh maybe it was just on my mobile and no. all right. Sure. All right. Uh, so we're aiming for hundred percent participation this year. Yep. So sounds good. Everyone can we'll definitely get will. that in the next uh, couple weeks, do the fifteenth. Okay. And then we'll do the events at the joint day. Sounds good. All right. Thank you. Uh, no collaborative report tonight. Superintendent's report. No. All right. And no executive session. Motion yeah. to adjourn. I'm sure my select board meeting is not still going on, so I don't have to go check. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Yeah. All right. Um, I'll adjourn at 7 54 p.m. Say bye. Bye. I'll call the meeting of the Director of the Public Committee to order at 5.47 p.m. Oh, our, okay, here's my hand. Okay, I'm going to take that. Oh, that's not really. Okay. I'll go to that. All right, so did you have time? Oh, so I was just going to ask, so we have a new percentage. Just wondered how you got there. Is it just adding on the transportation and no other changes? Strictly the transportation, no other changes made. The transportation increase was like 2.15 or 2.12, somewhere around there. 
we were at 2.5 presented at the last meeting. Transportation increase was, oh, I had accounted for $5,000 already, um, which would have been, I don't have it, been what the percentage was. Um, I can pull it up what that percentage is compared to the contract as it exists now. Um, but the total increase was 111,000. So the change in the budget is about $106,000 from the last meeting. Because the five was already. The five was already accounted for as an adjustment. Is it time to talk about that or just want to budget? And I just had some questions. So you can, we can, I would, the way we had kind of put it through is, and I talked to counsel about that, and that's what we did. He said, you want to make sure that you're clean about what you're putting sure. your pre or public hearing. And so because of timing wise, you know, we got the bid on Wednesday. Right. By the time we kind of realized about what we're going to do, we reposted this meeting prior to this meeting. Sure. So you're just going to have the higher number coming in. Yeah. You're going to discuss the full budget publicly about all the different kind of moving parts on it, including the higher bid. Okay. And then the bid hasn't been accepted yet, okay. and we won't be accepting it until the joint meeting in April. Okay. And so if there's questions about that, we also have an executive session on there. If we want to go in and talk about yeah. negotiations of a bid or sure. not accepting the bid, that kind of thing, you probably want to do that in yeah. confidentially to not lose any negotiating yeah. strategy, negotiating rights. Um, okay. So it's really about setting the higher number because you yeah. can't, we would have to, if we rose the, if we raise the percentage from public hearing, we have to repost the meeting. Right. It's got to be two weeks. We got to put in the paper. It costs a few hundred dollars. Yeah. It's just better that we just kind of come and set this. And I think it's very clear for the public to understand that yeah. we got the bid. It's higher, and that's why it moved right there. Then we're going to have to work on yep. what we're going to do. Um, do you want to entertain a motion? Okay. Yes. Sure. The number that we're going to answer the public hearing has already been inclusive of the no so no so we have you have your general operating budget which is the 2.5 it was 2.5 at the yes. last meeting even, right? yeah, yeah. 2.5 even and so now we are just dropping on the additional costs of the transportation contract and so and to be discussed about how we're going to do it so that's just very mm -hmm. you say we're just yeah we didn't do any other adjustments to it because we want to keep it very clean so you've already had your preliminary discussions at two and a half, which was wow. going to be pre a pretty lot easier budget discussion. And now all of a sudden it does has gotten more difficult. Yeah. So I, I could make a motion to um, to present the budget at four point six five percent over FY twenty four. Second. I'll all in favor? Okay. I think that's what we want. Yeah. Obviously, for the reception. All in favor? Annie just jumped on. Hi, Annie. Hey, Annie. Oh, we can't hear you. You're muted. Oh, we can't hear you. Can't hear you. I'm having a hard time hearing anyone but Darius. I can hear Darius pretty well. Um. I don't know if other people at home are having that problem, but I carry um, a presence with a microphone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In ver verbose voice. Um, I just want to, I think I heard that we are voting to move forward with a budget that's 4.65% to public hearing. To public, hearing. public hearing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And that's because of the transportation, which we Correct. knew was going to impact somehow. Okay. Yep. Okay, um, so Annie, we did take a vote to move it to public hearing. I didn't see. We didn't hear your vote yeah, yet. Okay, yes. Okay. okay, thank you. All right, I saw your hand. Yep. Oh, okay, that was <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. So, Annie, you're going to So, you're actually going to close this meeting. Mm -hmm because it's posted differently on a different link. Yep. Okay. And so those who are at home, you know what I will do is I will, to make it easy on all of you, I will put it in the chat. The yeah, new link, so you can just that's click that's on it, and you don't do any work. Okay, so we need a motion. Oh, I got the kitchen power suit. What? I got the kitchen power suit. Oh, they were close this community to return. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, this meeting turned at five fifty-two.
Yeah. Okay. So bye everybody online. <laughs>